Good whenever you're watching this and whatever day and time it is. Good evening, good morning. Not legal advice. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Uh, we try to respond to all comments, we being uh, JR and I also. Uh, so before I get started, of course, uh, today I'm going to briefly deal with Capybara with a petition to disclose the names of the parties that uh, made MMTLP trade October 2021, and briefly about my arbitration, and I'll talk about it more uh, in our live stream with JR on Sunday night at 8 Eastern. So before I get into that, three quick things. I would tell you about uh, my autumn joke, but you just wouldn't fall for it. Anger, the feeling that makes your mouth work faster than your brain. And last but not least, so I uh, RSVP'd to a wedding uh, with the response, maybe next time. I guess that wasn't uh, an acceptable response. Anyway, moving on. Um, so first I want to talk about Capybara. So Capybara was the uh, party that filed the fake short report. That's my characterization, uh, not legal advice. Uh, regarding finger motion. And a uh, there were some letters sent out, some negotiations, my understanding. And uh, eventually a lawsuit was filed. And apparently the, the parties who are capybara or associated with capybara have been discovered. Now, I personally do not know the names, but I'm, and I don't, I don't know these people per se, uh, but I saw the list and apparently uh, one of the names that was added was Igor Applebaum, and he, he apparently is connected to Capybara. Might might also involve, and I don't know this for a fact, but it might, might also involve Joseph Frilia, Nick Slocum, Eric Wood, etc. They seem to be a group of shorters that are colluding and working together, although I don't have specific knowledge of that. Only the work product as referenced in Capybara and their own social media posts. But what's, what's interesting is that the name has been identified, at least one of those names has been identified. A lawsuit is pending. They will be served. So for all these guys who are doing short activity, short and distort, now they will face legal consequences. And it's not just that there may be a liability. It's they're going to have to hire counsel, spend money. They will not like that. And discovery may ensue. And through discovery, it may be demonstrated the connections amongst all these people and who ultimately is paying the piper here? Who's paying the price for these somewhat uh, delusional, distorted positions and uh, reports? So there is a, so anyway, that that is pending. Uh, we will soon find out what these gentlemen may do. They may turn on others and disclose information that might be essential, important to all these tickers. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I'm sure when Capybara posted their short and distort uh, report, they had no idea that they would face liability and the cost. And again, to all those shorters out there or agents of the shorters, remember, you're going to incur a big cost out of your own pocket. So whether you think you're doing anything wrong or not, it's going to be an expensive uh, battle for you to to win. So interesting to me that the names were identified. Interesting to see what those parties do and interesting to see, and I think, whether this will have a chilling effect on these shorts. In other words, if they think they're at risk, are they going to do less of these short and distort reports? Um, I hope there are other actions that are filed against these parties if they're acting in bad faith, and I hope they have to face uh, large consequences if in fact they acted as such. I don't have any first-hand record first hand information, so we, we shall see. Second, there's a petition to disclose the names of those people who made MMTLP trade October 2021. So there was a prior petition filed that's on appeal, and that was much broader, relating to 105 brokers who were involved in the current trading of MMTLP or the or recent trading of MMT, MMTLP. This one instead is 
limited or focused on the October 2021 trading of MMTLP, the actions by the hedge funds or whoever prepared the Form 211 and utilized false and fraudulent information. So the so in essence, the claim in the petition that's filed in New York is that there was fraud committed. Uh, we don't know who the parties were because nobody will disclose the names. And that seems to fit directly within the um, statute. So the statute in New York, I'm in California, the statute in New York lets you obtain pre-petition discovery to ascertain the names of defendants. You can't use it to develop information regarding the claim, but you certainly can to identify the defendants. And in this particular petition, since everybody is failing to disclose that information, and since the OTC, which is the, the, the defendant, has that information, it seems to fit within the statute. So I think there's a, a pretty good chance that the court will grant the petition, whether the OTC files an appeal or whether other action ensues, we don't know. But I'm feeling somewhat optimistic about this petition. I didn't necessarily feel the same way about the first petition. But I think this kind of fits within the statute. So I think there's a reasonable chance that the judge will release the names of those particular defendants. Now, I don't know who they will release the names to. Will it be limited to just those parties in the case? Will it be public? We don't know. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But this will be a big step forward. And if, in fact, defendants' names are referenced and disclosed, it may be useful in with regard to other tickers, other situations. So have to wait and see. And again, I'm, I'm optimistic about that. I'm not necessarily, um, I try to keep a, a low profile on these things. But I think this one, this petition is well taken. And I think there's a good chance the judge will grant it. And then we'll find out the names. We've 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 suspected names but we will find names uh three um my arbitration so my arbitration i have a hearing on the 21st it's the i know it's going to sound awkward but it's the second initial uh hearing uh it's the first time we'll have all three arbiters uh Council will be there for fidelity. I will be there. It's on the 21st. It may just be a scheduling conference, may not be substantive, but I certainly will report on it. And I was thinking beyond that. I know all the parties that in GTII that have dividends or having problem getting their dividends. And, and I stated this before. Obviously, I can't recommend everybody to file an arbitration claim against their uh, broker because I know that not everybody can, not everybody's interested, not everybody has the means to do that. But to the extent you do, and to the extent that your broker you think is screwing you, then why? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be a welcome thing if there were a boatload of arbitrations questioning the actions of various brokers? I don't think they would have the ability to manage that. And I think the outcome would be beneficial. So I'm not recommending anybody to file their own arbitration. But if they do, feel free to call me or contact me, especially about Fidelity. I'm happy to kind of provide you whatever information that might be useful to you. But I know there is concern amongst brokers that if, in fact, the retail public filed a gross number of justifiable arbitrations that they would not be able to deal with that. So if there are other people out there who want to pursue arbitrations for not receiving their dividends, not receiving their stocks, uh, other acts that they claim were improper, uh, I would certainly support that. And I'm not, not financially support it, but I would certainly support that. I really think it would be beneficial. Um, I'd hoped that others up to this point in time would have filed arbitration claims. Um, because it is very time consuming for the defendant and expensive and impactful. So anybody files an arbitration or is contemplating it, feel free to reach out. Um, that's all I have today. Those three topics. Uh, be well, everybody. Take care. See you Sunday night at eight Eastern. Uh, have a great Saturday and see you then. Take care.